Welcome to my DIY channel. We're going to be installing the rear shocks, real hydraulic fluid shocks. Your rear shock actually is just a spring and it bucks back. So every time you hit something, it actually bounces back just as hard as fast. Okay. Let's see what came in here. Okay, again, no instructions from AliExpress. Uh, looks nice. Got the rebound adjustment. That is EXA 291. It's got this pretty looking red adjustment. It clicks. Yep. The, there's a preload, spring preload adjustment here. It's a 165 millimeter from eye to eye. It's a 1500 pound spring. In order to really check out if this adjustment, it rotates and clicks, but to see if it actually works, we're going to remove the spring and play with the shocks. That's what it looks like. There's the adjustment. And we're going to see what happens when we press and we pull. Compression and rebound. This adjustment all the way to the uh, counterclockwise. It says it's positive when you turn it counterclockwise. It doesn't go anymore. Goes right down. So there's basically almost no shock when compressing. Now we'll do the rebound. That's not too hard. Comes in and out. There's definitely a lot more force to pull it apart than pushing in. Okay. Now we're going to turn it down. See if it's actually less. Okay. Okay, so less means more. So if I dial to the negative side, which is clockwise, it's actually a lot more rebound. I can hardly even pull it apart. Okay, but if I dial to the positive side, I can pull it apart quite easily. So it looks like this, I guess plus means more springy effect. Minus means less springy effect. Plus means less dampening on a rebound. Minus means more dampening on a rebound. Completely backwards. But it does work. The rebound adjustment actually does adjust the rebound. And you're gonna need that much force because this is a 1500 pound spring per inch. That means that to compress the spring one inch, you're going to need a full 1500 pound weight on this. Okay, we're gonna put this together. Okay, it comes with this, uh, the lower spring place uh, holder so we put that in first then we put the spring on and then we have the preload adjustment screw up here that we just turn in then we put in these uh, what makes it look like uh, bushings for the rubber bushings it's actually a plastic Delrin type that makes it look like there's actually bushings pressed in it's not now I did notice that if I turn it sideways or upside down and start compressing and you can feel the air bubbles. So you are, I am sure it is designed to be mounted this direction. All right, so we're, taking, we're going to take apart the shock. I think we'll move the rear fender first. I'm thinking about not having to take out one this side, so we'll take out just one side. Off. All right. All right. Next, we remove the uh, axle nut, and that is uh, number 19. All right. Okay. 19. There is a key washer in there. Now we'll remove the disc brake also. Uh, this is the cable brakes. I don't want to remove these. Allen screw because if I do that I have to readjust the brakes. So hopefully doing it this way I won't need to readjust the brakes. So this is a five millimeter Allen screw pivot shaft here, 19 millimeters. Okay. Now that that's out, I believe this should just come out. Okay. Just, I guess, tap around, try to get loose. There it is. This should come right off. It's a four millimeter. 
Putting the new shock and the old shock side, the old uh, spring suspension side by side. This is the original. This is the EXA shock. And you can see that the EXA is just a little bit shorter, even though it's, this is the specification for it. So the washer, there's a pin that, uh, well, the bolt that goes on top. There's two thick washers. They go on both sides. So there'll be one on this side, like so. And of course, there's going to be another one on this side. Okay, that's how it's going to go in. That way, put the washer in. Okay, and then put the shock in. And then until it's through. Okay, it's here's the uh, bolt that's coming in, the upper shock bolt. It's coming in here, and there's a little gap here where this washer goes in. So we're going to place that washer in here and put the other side of the washer in and then push it through. Did you seriously just finish it just as I went to grab the flashlight? Yeah. Okay. Let me turn this. Okay. Again, make sure there's an alignment. Okay, now that the bottom uh, pin is in, the top bolts in but not, not tight, we'll slowly lock this thing back into this, this, this side of the suspension arm. I think we're going to tap there, there, right, we're going to lock it in slowly. This thing was a little bit um, difficult to get in, so the trick that I have is started putting on this nut. So you put on the uh, the axle nut here, right? Don't have to tighten it, just put it on by hand. It's not even snug, it's just in because you want it to be able to move a little bit. Then put in this screw, okay, until it touches. Hammer it a few times because this is a solid shaft. There's no thread. So use the socket wrench to turn a little bit, just like a half turn, bang it some more. Turn this a little bit more and then bang it some more until it's completely closed. We'll tighten it up. Uh, there's no torque spec, so I'm not going to do it too hard. We, okay, and we put in the last axle nut, tighten. Okay. okay, we'll put the disc brakes in. Okay, before we button everything all up, like putting the, I think the last piece is just the fender. I'm going to set this to the maximum plus, which we know is actually the least amount of uh, rebound. The preload is set to basically zero. Yeah, just jump the way you jumped before with the, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Bouncy, but not too bad, right? Yep. It's already better than the stock or no shock of course. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to turn the rebound up to the negative side. I think this is the max. This is about six clicks over. Nice. It's a big difference. Okay. So overall we are very happy with the suspension. The suspension actually it dampens significantly and reduces the bounce. With, that, with just pure spring like the stock, it would just bounce up and down and you can feel that pressure pushing against your legs.